Okay, Case of the Secret Silver, Chapter 9. I didn't tell you clue number four, Jennifer said, as she and Jake pedaled their bicycles down the hill. They passed a sign that said, Keep Going, in the Catholic Church, St. Mary's of the Mountains. They headed east, down the hill, away from Virginia City's downtown. The paved road became a dirt road. What's clue number four? Jake hollered as they pushed hard over the dirt and rocks. Clue number four is that somebody is on the trail of the silver bars, same as we are. The woman at the Mark Twain Museum mentioned him. So did the man at the bookstore. We must be getting close, Jake said. Let's stop and examine the map, Jennifer said. They pulled their bikes up by a spot where only the foundation remained on a building. Weeds grew inside and around the foundation. A field mouse scurried away from them and disappeared in the brush. She pulled out the map she had drawn in her notebook at the bookstore. Let's see. Here's the church. That mountain over there. That ruined foundation over here. Why, this is the spot, Jake said. The, this used to be Lawyer Bell's office. I believe you're right, Jennifer said. We're on our way to riches, and I'll be a famous detective. She pulled the camcorder from her backpack and videotaped the foundation and its weeds as she narrated her discoveries. She scanned the area. To the west was the central area of Virginia City. To the north were roads, a hotel, and mountains. To the south were more mountains and hills colored by mining tailings. To the east were junipers and trees. Let me see your compass, Jake said. She handed it to him. He circled around the foundation, checking the compass every now and then. Jennifer clicked off the camcorder. Have you found anything? Nothing but a bunch of old cans and beer bottles, Jake said. I don't see any treasure. Let me see that compass, Jennifer said. He handed it to her. Remember, we have to go a little further east. She paced a few steps east and almost tripped over a juniper branch. I don't see anything. No, we go west, Jake said. Jennifer checked her notes again. You're right, Jake. I'm glad I brought you along. We go west. Nothing here except this old fire hydrant, Jake said. Looks like it hasn't been used in years. He poked around it and kicked the dust with his boots. Clang! Did you hear that, he asked? It sounded like I hit a metal plate. Let me see, Jennifer said. She picked up a smooth rock, got down on her hands and knees, and began scraping away the dirt. After a few minutes, she saw a glint of metal. She dug faster, and Jake helped her. After 20 minutes, they had uncovered a square piece of metal with a handhold on the north side. Jake glanced around. It's a good thing no one comes down here, he said, or they'd see us in this plate and ask what we were doing. Jennifer pulled on the handhold. The metal plate budged a hair's breadth. Help me with this, she panted. It's heavy. Jake wrapped his fingers around the handhold and pulled with all his might. Again, it barely budged. We can't do it, Jennifer said. This is a job for a grown-up. Then it's a good thing I'm here, said a voice behind them. 